All right, let's start with the review of the ES and then we'll go to gold and then uh, oil. So with the ES, I mean, I think it's still in the uptrend. This may have been the climactic bar here. Right there, not that one. This one, damn it. Uh, not that one. <laughs> I don't know why it does that. But this one here is heavy, heavy volume and it didn't have fall to, in fact, it had a reversal. So there might be some accumulation here. That's what I'm looking at. But in any case, um, let's take a look. Yeah, I mean, it's just testing. And this may have been a spring. Uh, all right. So, what we see here. So, I'm going to go into this. So, we had this break, pull back. So, this is where there was distribution. Right? Distribution that preceded this little markdown, right? So we know that that area here, that's a resistance area. Why is it resistance? Because it's a distribution brick. How do you know it's a distribution brick? White brick followed by red bar. Therefore, distribution followed by markdown. So it's a resistance area, simple as that. So the market came down here, they covered or you know got minor accumulation. And then it went in and tested that area. As it tested that area, it set up the cell to go lower. Now you see the pullback right into that area and it reversed. So these areas, they're good areas. Meaning you know that there's selling pressure there. So if there's selling pressure there, you wait for the test of the white box followed by the red bar, it's test. And then again, test and it went down. I mean, take a look at what happened today. It tested that area and kaboom. Now I didn't get this because I mean, it's just too uh, wild. You know, what they did was they brought the market lower here, right? And then from that area, I don't know if it was covering or whatever, but it just went straight up to take the liquidity out here, to take the stops out right above here. So they went up there and that area is pretty strong. Took, took it out and went down. I, I don't really think this is like enough of a pullback to trade here or here, it's just weird. So, uh, you know, market went down. Let's see. Up here was where it was interesting, but it's too early in the morning. But you could see that this volume was heavy and this volume was light. Uh, not really light. Can't really tell. Look light. I can't really tell, but I mean, it's low, right? If you see this low volume right here, five. Yeah, I mean, it's bigger than these two, so the only evidence that the selling was coming in was this wave. Anyway, it's really not worth it over here. And it went straight down, and over here, they covered and went up to this area. The only evidence you had that you should either get out or establish a short around that area was this white brick. So this white brick is the, I mean, white box is the distribution that yielded the markdown, which set up the test and reverse. So that's why, you know, um, I'll show you how, what Wyckoff did. And, uh, and then you'll understand. All right, so here, here is 
what Wyckoff did, all right? So the reason why I mention it is because this is actually the complete method for intraday trading, which is not used today, by the way. I, you know, um, it has a lot of value, but I don't really see it used, but I use it. And uh, you see over here, he has the wave chart. See those waves? See all the waves? And then with the wave chart, he uses the um, the tape reading chart. The tape reading chart, you'll see it has numbers. So what, it, what do we call that today? We call it the footprint chart. So what needs to be done is you basically take a time frame. You put a wave chart on it. And then um, you get an equivalent footprint chart. So you can see the construction and what's going on inside the waves. That's all it is. But I mean, if, you are, if you're interested, this is what he did. Take a look. Footprint on a PNF called the tape reading chart with uh, a wave chart. And you have more examples of this. Here's another one. Right? So you see all this shit? Boom. Mm -mm -mm. Base break right there. So I, I, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure I went through all this. Or maybe I didn't. I don't know. But I went through some of these studies. I don't recall all the details. But this is the idea. You have wave chart and you have the footprint. So the idea here is for if you're a Wyckoff style trader, you combine those two. And I will now show today's trade with crude and how the wave chart was used with the, you know, the tape reading chart and how effective it is. But anyway, so I'm done with this ES. ES, it, you'd really, you just needed to know where the resistance was. So if you're long, get the hell out on the resistance. And if you want to establish a short, you wait for the re reversal at resistance. And you know, that's it. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, so like I mentioned, um, you know, there's a question before one of the initial questions of, is, uh, you know, what markets do I trade or what markets do you trade? The way you answer this question is basically the word relative strength. All right, those markets have a edge, meaning they have clear cut direction. The market has a lot of trading age. Tr uh, what is it? Relative strength. It means it's going in one particular direction. So you have answered that particular question that solved that problem and now the next problem is how do you execute the entry and where do you keep your stop and all that so we know that this market is extremely strong and uh, the market basically you know it rallied climax minor climax pulled back reaccumulated right here on the 117 broke out here okay so i'm waiting for the pullback oh look at that it goes right to this area of the 117 where these guys defend and bang right up there now where can it go down to well we have this 59 here right so it taps that 59 now when it taps that 59 this is where i'm looking at it like intently because what happened was the in the morning you know the market was pulled back boom 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 right but here I forgot what it was, a daily high or prior day high or weekly high or your prior, I don't know what this is, prior, prior day high. It tapped the prior day high, had high volume there, right? And then guess what it did? It broke this little structure here. If you notice, it pulled back. It's not a big base, which is why I don't like these markets that much because you can't really see the accumulation clearly because they're very thin markets. And um, the thicker markets, you will see the base. The thinner markets, they, just, they can look like a V bottom sometimes or they have very thin bases. Now here's the thing, it goes down. Look at the volume here. That's 6,700 shares, okay? Now, from the high to this low, 
that right there is the most amount of volume print, 67. All right, now what that is telling me, what that is telling me is this is a potential for a climax. What kind of climax? Basically a minor climax. It makes this little up wave, retests, and then breaks. When it breaks, it has taken out the high of the climax box and on 5100 contracts, pressure, breaking this high, okay? So I'm looking at the wave chart and I see market go down, market go down, market go down. Now watch this. This is one of the benefits of the wave chart, all right? As it's going down, what do you know for lower prices? Does supply increase or decrease? Well, they're getting worse prices, so they will decrease, right? Whereas demand will increase if prices are low. Look at the supply. This is the natural law of supply and demand. Price goes down, supply goes down. Demand goes up. Lower prices mean increase in demand, right? So I noticed this right here. And then you had this, this little structure right here, this little break to the upside. On this break to the upside, noticed 5,100 5, contracts. And the pullback here, you know how much pullback, pullback there was here? The pullback here on the wave, all right, is 35% of the average, okay? 35% of the average and it's testing the minor creep. This is a low volume pullback. Given this decreasing supply, given this bar here, which is a breakout, which I'm looking on this chart as well. Given the weak supply, the market is ready and is on the springboard. Because this right here, this overlapping area with the break is actually a base, a base of accumulation right here. Sometimes we don't see it like that, but when you have this one, two, three up waves and then a break, when these overlapping waves and overlapping bars are, are followed by a break, you, you wanna examine them because this is actually accumulation here, right on top of yesterday's high, followed by a break, followed by a high volume, followed by a minor climax in the back, followed by a low volume pullback with overall decreasing supply. So this is ready to mark up and it did. It gave a very nice move, basically tapped the high or close to it right there. We went from here to there. Now I know it's not a huge move, I don't know what's gonna happen. Maybe it's gonna go higher here, I don't know. But that's what set up the move. This move, all the indications I said, I, you know, what, if, if you wanna understand this, this behavior right here, of um, as trend goes lower or higher, you, this the same thing for demand. It, the, you sh the volume should decrease. This is the natural law of supply and demand, meaning when price goes up, Demand goes down, when price goes down, supply goes down. Because as price decreases, you get worse prices to sell because you always wanna sell high. When demand, when price goes up, demand decreases. So you'll have the lessening of uh, demand. And this is from any book. If you see the, you know, the, the demand supply curve, this is it.
in trading, that, that that's exactly, if you take any, any economics book, you'll have that supply demand thing, those curves intersecting, you know, up and down. This is it. Anyway, so from that area, it blasted, blasted up. It didn't take out the high, but came very close and tapped this area. So this was the opportunity to go long here in order to get, um, in order to get this swing. It's not a big swing, but whatever. The diagnosis was correct that it was on the springboard right here to launch. All right, let's take a look at uh, the, all right, so for crude, I mean, for gold, this is a disaster. So this market was, I mean, this was a very tricky market. Like, I'll, I'll be very frank. If you don't have higher time frame trend, the behaviors and all of that, they are highly suspect. Because if you take a look at this, here, the supply started decreasing as well. As it goes down, you had this uh, supply decreasing, right? And then you had this crazy bar, right? So this was in a position to mark up. I mean, take a look at this, boom, boom, one, two, three, and this high takes out all the highs and it failed all the way down here, right? So th this is uh, one of the things I wanna mention, all these structures and patterns and all of that, they're all secondary to higher time frame trend. Why is this crude here? I don't know why this should be gold, but the idea, the idea here in uh, in uh, gold is that the mar <coughs> the market itself is weak, and um, and this failed because of that. So the trend is down and the market is weak. It's uh, poor. It has minus two relative strength and uh, downtrend. And you're not going to go anywhere with with uh, with that. I mean, basically, the rallies attempts will be sold. So this is the other thing I want to mention today. I'm going to go into well my understanding of what is edge. Okay. So if you ask anyone what is their edge, right? You'll see many people give many answers. Some will say uh, it's a breakout on volume. Others will might say oh it's a fake fake breakout or spring. Others will say it's a well, upthrust, a spring and upthrust. Others will say it's some VWAP. Others will say it's a pattern, like uh, you know, a pattern that uh, maybe head and shoulders break. Well, you see, you hear all of this, and many will say it's a candle pattern. So what they're looking for is certain candle patterns, you know, three bar patterns, two bar patterns. Others will say some type of mean reversion, and the list goes on and on. But I'll tell you, like my understanding uh, is all of this. Uh, I, I don't, I don't think it's um, real edge, real edge because um, you know one and two bars are just one and two data points. Three bars, it's like three data points. So spring and up thrust and VWAP and all of that, and all of the myriad of other things is all secondary or tertiary to the overall direction of higher time frame. Meaning that the higher time frame is already trying to go to an objective, all right? So if those bars are going up like that, that's your higher time frame. That alignment with that higher time frame, alignment with that higher time frame, I believe that to be edge. Which means it's it it's really composed of trend, relative strength. Trend and relative strength. You must it, I, I'm of the opinion that alignment with this is what makes 
this work. Alignment of the high time frame trend relative strength is what makes all of this shit work. Why? Because th those, <coughs> they're, <coughs> they're trying to get to an objective. They're trying to get from here to there. So, and what that means is you must align yourself with this because on lower time frames, you will, you know, you will look at this in gold. How bullish this bar looks. Isn't this a breakout? Yes. I mean, take a look. Is this a breakout? Yes. Does it break one, two, three, four highs? Yes. Is there a spring? Isn't that a spring of this low right there? Is that spring having follow through with a breakout? Yes. Is there effort to go down? Yes. Is it on volume? Yes. Does it take out multiple highs? Yes. Does it break the upper channel? Yes. Then why doesn't it work? Why doesn't it work? And the answer is all of the candles are bullshit because those, these are just entry time frames and the patterns they present mean nothing. It is the higher time frame objectives, meaning just going up and down that are meaningful everything else is secondary so this in itself by itself in my opinion is bullshit it needs to be in alignment with edge for it to be meaningful otherwise if i show you this you would say that you know the climax the lack of volume the break this over here is 2.3 times the average volume the, all of that there's a reversal and all that. All price volume indications show the break of the range, etc. But it is un, it is not meaningful. And I'll explain why now. Because within within trend, right? You have all this on high high time frame within trend. Right at uh, maybe I'll draw a downtrend. And you know, just give the case for. These legs, these pullbacks, these bearish pullbacks here on lower time frame, this, you know, this can look very bullish. They can look very, very bullish. Meaning these pullbacks here on lower time frames can look very bu bullish they can look like bang you know like uh, they look like th this area will look very bullish you know it, it looks like that but then th th it'll have a change of behavior too but it won't go anywhere and it'll fail and, and uh, the next leg down. Why? Because all of the patterns, all of the whatever, they are against or they're diverging in direction with the higher time frame trend. And that's it. All patterns, all that shit comes secondary to the edge, which is the edge is trend and relative strength. All right. Okay, I'm done. Uh, so what am I looking at on the uh, on crude? Uh, what is this gold? This is gold. What am I looking at in gold? I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna I'll just look at what what those areas are and then just play the levels. All right, everybody, take care. Bye.